Welcome back. This module is all about edge transport. We're going to be looking at the edge transport server role, what the edge transport installation and firewall requirements are, how to configure edge sync, and then also how to use one of the edge transport features called address rewriting. The edge transport server role is an optional server role for exchange organizations. You're not required to deploy this server role at all and you would typically only install it if you need a specific feature or to satisfy a security policy. Edge Transport is involved in SMTP communications or email transport. It's not involved in any other connectivity such as client connectivity for the organization. That's a misconception that comes up quite often with people assuming that Edge is also supposed to be a sort of reverse proxy for client connections. One or more edge transport servers are typically placed in a perimeter network and one of the most common reasons is organizations who require no direct connectivity between the internal network and the internet. So the edge transport server role is able to sit in that perimeter network and prevent connections from going directly to the internal network. The edge transport server role has some additional transport agents that are not available on mailbox servers. One in particular is used for address rewriting, which we'll look at later in this module. There's another agent for attachment filtering, and then there's also other anti-spam agents as well, and we're going to look into those in a later module of this course. The edge transport server must be able to resolve the mailbox server names inside your organization. One of the simplest ways to achieve that is to point the edge transport server to your internal DNS. So it's able to look up those internal names. If you can't do that for some reason, you'll need to provide another DNS server or perhaps even use host file entries on the edge transport servers. The mailbox servers inside your organization must be able to resolve the edge transport server names as well. And the way that we usually achieve that is by manually adding a records in the internal DNS zones. Because it's involved in routing internet email, the edge transport server also must be able to perform public DNS lookups for MX records. As far as firewall requirements go, the edge transport server needs both directions open between the edge transport servers and the internal exchange servers, as well as between the edge transport servers and any external email servers. In addition to the SMTP connectivity, Edge Sync, the Edge Sync process, also needs TCP port 50636 open between the mailbox servers inside the organization to be able to connect outbound to the Edge Transport servers in the perimeter network. So let's go into the Globemantics environment and look at installing the Edge Transport server role. Now being a simpler server role, there's fewer components in Windows actually required to run an edge transport server. So the prerequisite installation is quite simple. All we need is the Active Directory Lightweight Directory service feature. Now that ADLDS instance is going to hold the information about the internal exchange organization and Active Directory environment that gets synchronized to the edge transport server as part of the edge sync process. With that prerequisite installed, we can go ahead with the installation. The Exchange 2016 setup files have already been extracted to this folder on the server. Exchange setup is always run from an elevated command prompt. And for command line setup, we just run setup.exe. The mode is install. The role being installed is the edge transport server role, which is just E for short. And then we always have to accept the Exchange Server license terms. So that setup process is going to go through, check the prerequisites, and then proceed with the install. When it's done, the server needs a restart, and we can move on to configuring the Edge subscription. This video is going to look at the process of Edge Sync. Edge transport servers don't have access to Active Directory. They aren't domain members, and they shouldn't even have inbound access through the firewall to connect to any of your domain controllers. But they do need to know information about your environment, and that information is synchronized through the process of Edge Sync. So Edge Sync is the process of synchronizing data from Active Directory to the Edge transport server, where it's stored 
in the Active Directory Lightweight Directory service instance on the Edge Transport server itself. The information that's synchronized includes topology data about the internal exchange organization, configuration data, and recipient information. The Edge subscription also creates the send and receive connectors for internet mail flow. So Globomantics is deploying Edge Transport servers in the San Francisco data center. So we'll jump into the demo environment and look at the process of configuring Edge Sync. So here on the Exchange Edge Transport server, we need to open up the Exchange management shell. There is no graphical user interface or web user interface for the Edge Transport server role. All of the administration needs to be performed through the management shell. Now, just as one example of how the Edge Sync process works, let's have a look at the list of accepted domains on the Edge Transport server at the moment. And you can see that there are no accepted domains as far as this Edge Transport server is concerned. So to create the Edge subscription, we need to create an Edge subscription file. This is done by running the new Edge subscription commander and just specifying the file name that that XML file can be output to. Now that we have that file, we can simply copy it to one of the mailbox servers within the San Francisco data center and complete the process there. So this is San Francisco Exchange Server 1. The edge.xml file has been copied from the Edge Transport server. And in the Exchange Management shell, the new Edge subscription commandlet is used again. And this time you see this very long command, which is basically saying, where should I get the file data for the Edge subscription itself? So the edge.xml file is being used. And also to nominate which site, which Active Directory site, the Edge subscription should be configured for. In this case, it is San Francisco. And now that Edge subscription has been completed. Notice the warning that Edge Sync requires the mailbox servers in the Active Directory site be able to resolve the IP address for San Francisco Edge 01. And because those DNS entries have already been added to the zone, that looks like it's going to work just fine. Now in the Exchange Admin Center, we should be able to see some of the changes that were caused by that Edge subscription. In the Send Connectors view, there are two Send Connectors that have been created by the Edge subscription. One is for inbound email into the San Francisco site, and the other is for outbound email from the San Francisco site to the internet. And those connectors will use the Edge Transport server for inbound and outbound mail flow. So in actual fact, we don't need the manually created outbound internet email send connector that was previously created, we can actually get rid of that. And outbound email will continue to work, this time through the Edge Transport server. We would also need to update the firewall to make sure that it is natting inbound SMTP connections to the Edge Transport server now, instead of to the internal mailbox server. Later on, we'll take a look at how to analyze message headers when troubleshooting Mailflow, and that will show you which servers the Mailflow is going through to get in and out of this organization. And we also know that the Edge Sync process is supposed to synchronize data from the internal organization to the Edge Transport servers. So let's go back to San Francisco Edge 01, and let's see if get accepted domain now returns any results. Well, we can see that now the Edge Transport server is aware of the accepted domains. We can also see that it is aware of the send connectors that exist for routing into the organization and back out of the organization. So it looks like Edge Sync has successfully completed its initial synchronization. And that process is going to be ongoing as other changes are made within the Exchange Org. So now let's take a look at address rewriting. The Edge Transport server role is capable of rewriting the email addresses of senders and recipients in emails as they are passing through the Edge server on their way in or out of the organization. And by rewriting, I mean modifying or replacing. There are two transport agents installed on the Edge Transport servers that perform this function, the address rewriting inbound agent and the address rewriting outbound agent. Both agents are enabled by default you can disable them if you need to, or just leave them enabled because they won't actually do anything until you've configured address rewriting entries or rules. The scenarios where address rewriting can be useful include rewriting of single email addresses to another email address. And this might be for presenting a generic public alias for a particular sender, 
or for consolidating a team of support agents into a single public email address. We can also do rewriting of a single domain name to another domain name. This can be useful during a rebranding exercise. And there's also rewriting of subdomains to a single domain. This is useful for situations where multiple internal subdomains are used and you want to flatten them to a single domain name for all external mail. As an example of outbound rewriting of an email address, we could rewrite all emails from the CEO, Adam Wally, when they're sent to external recipients to send from CEO at globemantics.biz. It would then be a case of adding that CEO at globemantics.biz as a secondary email address or a proxy address to Adam's mailbox for the inbound replies. As another example, we could look at doing bi-directional rewriting of a subdomain such as research.globemantics.biz to the domain globemantics.biz. Now in this situation, when you're rewriting subdomains to a single primary domain, the uniqueness of the email addresses is still required. So jim at research.globomantics.biz will get rewritten to jim at globomantics.biz. So there can't be a separate user who already has that email address of jim at globomantics.biz in the organization. Now while all of these scenarios are possible, the fact is that the use of the address rewriting features of Edge Transport is mostly confined to very specific rebranding or merger or divestiture scenarios. And it's not the sort of feature you'll see commonly configured in exchange environments, but you still need to understand at least the basic capabilities. So let's quickly go into the Globomantics environment and look at configuring an address rewriting entry. On the Edge Transport server using the Exchange Management Shell, we can run the new address rewrite entry commandlet. Give the address rewriting entry a name such as CEO, specify the internal address that is going to be rewritten, and then the external address that it should be rewritten to. The outbound only parameter is optional. If you don't specify the outbound only parameter, it will default to false. So the address rewriting will work for mail entering the organization as well. In this case, we're going to say outbound only is true. So the replies to CEO at globomantics.biz will not be rewritten on the way back in, but they will still go to Adam Wally's mailbox because that is a secondary email address on his mailbox. So from Adam Wally's mailbox, let's send an email to an external address. That email has arrived after a few moments and we can see by looking at the email that it has changed to a CEO at globomantics.biz email address, even though the display name itself doesn't actually change. And let's see what happens on a reply. So it's definitely replying to CEO at globomantics.biz. And that email has routed back in and just fine to Adam Wally's mailbox because he does have the CEO at globomantics.biz as a secondary email address. So that is basically address rewriting in action. Like I said, it's not something you'll encounter all that often in the real world, but you do need to understand at least the basics of how it can work for the exchange certification exam. So to wrap up this module about edge transport servers, we looked at why the edge transport server role is deployed by some organizations and also how to install and configure an edge transport server. And finally, we looked at one of the features, which is how to use address rewriting. Coming up in the next module, we're going to go into security and message hygiene.